Hello everyone. Hope you're all keeping safe in these tough times of the national lockdown. Please be a responsible citizen and maintain social distancing. All right. So today we're going to try and demystify what does the R package for Ruta really do. Before we move on, I'd like to quickly introduce myself. I am Rito and I am a data scientist at Rapido. For those of you who don't know what Rapido is, we are a bike taxi application who are looking to revolutionize daily commute in India. We are currently operational across 83 tier 1 and tier 2 cities. Alright, back to me, so I am a measurement enthusiast and I am really curious about anything and everything under the sun. I am also a biker by the weekends when I am not doing data science and I am a proud owner of a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. All right, so back to the topic of the day. Boruta at its very basic is a feature selection methodology. If you're not aware of what feature selection is, that's not a problem. We're going to quickly discuss about it. So feature selection is the process of trimming down a large data frame so that we can identify the factors which largely affect our target variable. Taking an example, let's say you're assigned the task of predicting house prices from various features. So now some features could be demographic, like the portions of the area the house is located in, like proximity to the river, if it's sea facing or not, or it could be certain other economic and geographical conditions. Or you could be dealing with trying to predict a type of cancer from doing what we call genomic analysis by analyzing someone's DNA. Now, in both of these cases, we could actually be dealing with an immensely large number of features. But what is the problem with that? Why can't we throw all of it in a black box model and get our prediction? There are two reasons behind that. Because processing such a large number of features in any model would be extremely computationally expensive and even could be even infeasible for cases like the DNA analysis. The other point is a principle we call garbage in, garbage out which means that most machine learning models tend to show a dip in accuracy when the number of variables that is provided to us is significantly higher than what is optimal. So that brings us to the types of feature selection that we can do. What we briefly talked about is what we call the minimal optimal method of feature selection, where given a target variable, the goal is to try and find out the minimal optimal subset of features that could do well enough for a model to predict what the target variable is. The other method of feature selection is what we call the relevant all method. Here instead of looking for a minimal optimal subset, we try and find out all the relevant features that contribute to a particular event. This is especially important for data scientists in the day-to-day -day job who try and hint at causality over some observable behavior. This is where Boruta fits in. Let's address the elephant in the room. Boruta is a wrapper approach of feature selection built around a random forest classifier. Uh, uh, jargon alert. Let's take a step back. So what is a wrapper approach? Feature selection methods can be divided into two broad subclasses. Filtering methods look at statistical measures to identify correlation and filter out features that are not important predicting the target variable. A good example of this could be the Pearson coefficient. While in wrapper methods, we try to use the subset of features and train a model using them. Based on the inferences that we draw from the previous model, we decide to add or remove features from our subset. A random forest is an ensemble model which is backed by decision trees. It uses a technique called bagging to create lots of decision trees each time with a different set of observations. What random forests also provide us are z-scores for variable importance for all the considered features. Now let's look at how Boruta does this. Say to simplify things down we only have one target variable and one feature. The target variable in this case is the house price and the a feature in consideration is the area of the house in square feet. As you can see, both of these are continuously increasing functions. We have done this for simplicity's sake, 
because now a larger house would always have a higher price than a smaller house. Now how Boruta would determine feature significance in this kind of a setup is it first would create a shadow feature of the feature under consideration, in this case the area. So it first creates an exact replica of the original attribute and then jumbles up the values in the shadowed feature. So now if you look at the shadow shuffled feature, a 800 square feet house is actually priced much much higher than a 1250 square feet house. So you might start to get the hang of what Boruto does. What it tries to say is if a feature is actually important towards a target variable, then it better be at least more important than a randomized version of itself. What Boruto then does is passes both of these features in a random forest classifier, which tries to predict the house price for the target variable. We then get a pair of z-scores for both the features, the actual one and the shadowed one. We perform a two-sided hypothesis test for equality for both of these and consider the actual feature as important if and only if the z-score of it is significantly more than the z-score of the randomized shadow feature. Hope that makes sense. Now, we only did this for one variable. Ideally, in real case scenarios, you would be dealing with multiple features that you would want to do a feature selection on. So now, we look at how Boruta does this for multiple features. First of all, it adds shadow attributes as shown in the previous slide for all of the actual features present. It then calculates the maximum z-score across all of these shadow attributes, which is termed as the MZSA, then does a, performs two-sided tests for each feature in comparison with the MZSA, and then if a particular variable's z-score is significantly higher, is it termed as important, whereas if it is significantly lower, it is termed as unimportant. Otherwise, it is termed as indecisive. This process is repeated until all the actual features are classified as important or not important. Alright, that's enough from the theoretical side. Now let's actually dive into RStudio and see how easy it is for you to implement this in your work. Alright, so we have fired up RStudio and you can see a bunch of code here. If you're not familiar with R or RStudio, that is not a problem, this is still going to make sense to you. So we first import the MLBinge and the Boruto library and the data itself. Here in the top right corner is the environment of RStudio where every data or variable that you create is quickly accessible. Here we can see a list of jumbled up columns that doesn't make much sense right now. So then we have to use the help method to understand the data. So now every column that we saw previously in the data frame is labeled as what it is. Here, the predictor variable would be number 4, which is the daily maximum 1 hour average ozone rating. The rest of the features like month, day of month, day of week, what the temperature was on the day, what is the immersion base height, and the likes. Now, what we see the data frame again, it makes much more sense to us. This V4 is the target variable, and the rest are the features that we want to do feature selection on. So now, if you can see, there are a lot of any values here, which is not good from a feature modeling point. So we'll take care of them first with the na.emit method of R. We then proceed to set the C so that all of us get the same outcome no matter what. Then we actually run Boruta, and if you can see, it runs extremely fast for this kind of data. And after 49 iterations and around 1.3 seconds, it actually has an output. So what is it? So if we check the boruta.ozone method, we see that boruta performed 49 iterations and it has confirmed that 9 attributes are relevant to the target variable, while 3 attributes are confirmed as unimportant. That is impressive, it did that in much less time. We can also visually represent the output of Boruta. So here, if I could quickly guide you through, 
there are three red boxes, which are the minimum z-score across all of the shadow attributes, the average z-score across all of the shadow attributes, and the maximum z-score. Now, if you recall from the slides, the z-score of every actual feature would be compared with the maximum z-score across all the shadow variables. We then perform pairwise two-sided hypothesis tests. Here, all the green box plots resemble the features that had z-scores significantly higher than the maximum z-score of the shadow attributes and hence are our confirmed important features. Borunda also gives you a confirmed formula which only includes just the important features. So as soon as we do that, you can see it gives us the output which can directly be put in, in linear regression or any other kind of model. So that is all for this time. Before signing off, as a precaution for larger data sets, Baruta does actually seem to take a lot of time, so please don't worry. I would highly encourage every one of you to try this in your day-to-day -day work and see the brilliant results that it manifests. That is all from me this time. I hope you liked the video and it was helpful. Please stay tuned for more content and let me know if there is a particular topic that you would want me to cover. Thank you.